Good morning and welcome to another Haskell Kata. Um, I'm going to do the same Kata as yesterday, the bowling game Kata, uh, and I will continue where we left off, like we said yesterday. Um, I did do a recording before this, which uh, went wrong because I forgot to uh, switch a setting. So it might not look like yesterday completely. Um, but um, yesterday we had a small implementation and it uh, did work. Um, and we were generating laws uh, using QuickSpec. And the laws were not that interesting um, because, um, yeah, oh, my timer, I have to set it. Uh, because the, um, uh, yeah, there were not that many observations and we kept rolling ones and zeros, um, which are not too interesting. So let's see what we can do. Um, try and put on some background music maybe that's interesting um if we start looking at what we had um the laws that we rolled or that we <laughs> discovered were an empty game uh, has a score of zero which is yeah not too interesting but a very good point if you roll uh x then roll zero it is the same as rolling uh, zero and then X. So the roles are interchangeable, which might be correct, but it's yeah, because you never have a strike for that game or a, you you might have a spare and then it, no, it would not be the same if this one is a strike, but we haven't don't have a complete game, so the scoring doesn't get any uh, bonuses. Uh, rolling zero twice is the same as not playing at all, which is a statement. But um, yeah, um, if you have no scores and no uh, concept of framing or ending, I can see where you get this. Um, if you roll zero and then roll x, the score will be x. Okay, true. If you roll one and x, then the score will be one plus x. Okay, also true. If you roll one, uh, zero and then x plus one, it will be the same as rolling one and then rolling x. Um, this I would disagree with, and we need to add a constraint um, because if x is 10, this definitely doesn't work. Because rolling zero, they all start from an empty game, by the way. If you roll zero and then roll 11, yeah, it's not the same as rolling uh, 1 and then rolling 10. Or hmm, maybe this still holds if we constrain x. But let's see where we get. Um, if we roll 1 plus 1 and then x, it's the same as rolling 1 and then x plus 1. And so hmm, uh, I think we get so can get somewhere if we constrain what we can roll. So let's add a constructor and a type that constrains this. Um, this is how we uh, construct an arbitrary game. And uh, wait, let's start here. Uh, the role function will take any int now. And if we give it a wait pins type, I will call it pins and not role. We don't need this yet. We give it a pins um, type and we say let's um, constrain pins to be always between 0 and 10. So we clamp it down. That might be easier and uh, we might get a bit more interesting uh, information. So we have a type pins now and it has a constructor pins. That's why I didn't want to call the type role, because then we have the constructor role, which already is. Um, uh, it has the same name as this function here. Um, a new type pins. And it still only gets an int. Do we need to be able to show it? Maybe. Not yet requested. And that function pins, we need to do. We need to need have a constructor. If you give an int, we will give you pins. And the pins will be 
this type, but with a minimum of zero. So a, a maximum of 10. So uh, if we give it 11, the minimum of 10 and 11 is 10. So the, it will be topped off at 10. And if we give it a lower one, it will be uh, anything below 10 will come through here, but will be uh, bottomed off by the zero. Um, yeah. Now we have the issue that uh, there is no pins type visible, and now there is no arbitrary instance. We cannot randomly generate pins. Let's do this and just say that we call the pins constructor. Um, but we will have to call it with a number between 0 and 10. We don't have to, but it makes it easier. And this is something from quick check. So now these don't work. We give them pins, also give them pins. Let's map these with pins and same here. Okay. Now this works, but um, uh, we can see only one law, and that is because we don't have any. Um, yeah, we do have an arbitrary instance for pins, but we didn't tell QuickSpec that it could use it. So we can do this here. Uh, yeah, now we have to make it observable and make it observable I think we need to be um, well do we need to make it observable yeah probably let's let's just go with it it might be that we can add it and don't say this needs to be observable but can just call equal on it but I'm not sure if I do want to do this and now how we observe it we cannot just score score on P um, so let's just how to get pins observing observation um, and that is just getting it out of the new type so it will uh, yeah let's get the end back out okay I forgot to save it. Um, now we still don't have that many laws. It's still only the empty game. But we can change this. Because we also need to give it the constructors. Four pins. So that we can generate it as input. And we want to have a constructor. Or This is not a constructor, by the way. This means constant. Constant that I can use to... Uh, uh, build up uh, types and laws. Uh, get pins. Okay, and now we do have laws. So let's look at this. Um, this is still the same. Score of a game is zero. Um, if we do, yeah, this is not too interesting. Neither is this. Oops get pins of pins zero is zero yeah of course those are it, it's generating a lot of interesting information which is not really interesting let's put these in the background um we are not interested in how pins and get pins relate because it's a one-on-one -on -one, it's a new type um yeah and it doesn't auto format and i Find that out. Type applications. Uh, um, passing a type to a function like this is called type application, and my auto formatter thinks this means something else at the moment. But I have that uh, extension uh, always activated, so now it auto formats again. 
not too much of concern, I hope. Uh, okay, let's not look at the pins. But let's look at um, score of an empty game. If we roll zero pins and then roll X, we might as well have done the other way around. Yeah, that's the same we had, but now with pins. If we have X and then zero, the score will be X, which is really interesting. Also something we had already. Um, rolling zero twice is the same as yeah, rolling game. And rolling X and Y is the same as, yeah, the, Ah, it tries to observe the pins. Indeed, it does try to find. It creates this. It creates a pins of a score of x and y. It's not. It's it is an interesting interesting way of doing stuff. I wouldn't try to get a score and then create that pins out of it. Nee. Okay, um, and finally, um, the score of rolling 1 and then X is the same as 1 and oh, getting pins X. Ah, oh, this is, yeah, here X is pins and X is always pins. Um, we can rename those variables by using one observe bars here, and then we can say uh, I want uh, any game to be called G and the same for pins. I want it to call, be called P. So the wait, I have a redundant import now. And this makes it a bit easier to read. Rolling P and then pins of one is the same as one and get pins P. Doesn't matter at all. But um, they, they are still not too interesting. I want to add strikes and spares. Because maybe rolling strikes and spares gives us more interesting those. <clears throat> I would say those are constructors here for uh, a game the same as roll is. So say we roll a strike. Oops. That will be the same as uh, rolling 10. And spare. We need to give pins. Oops. Um. So if we have <clears throat> this and the game, it's the same as first rolling pins P. Uh, yeah, but then completing it by having, by rolling 10 minus P. So that, that completes the frame. And we need to add that to the, oops, add that to the laws. And see where we get. We do have a lot more laws now. So what do we get? The same, still the same. Score of a game is zero. A spare for any pins P is the same as a spare for any pins P2, which is correct. A spare after a strike is the same score as a strike after a spare, which is correct for the laws that we have now, because... <clears throat> A strike counts, yeah, this is not a complete game. Um, if you roll a strike, the next two rolls count twice. And if you roll a spare, the next one roll counts twice. 
if you don't power anything after that, yeah, this is the same score. <clears throat> no, it isn't. Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. This one is, I think, not correct. If you have a strike thrice, it's the same as a strike twice. I would not go so far as to say this is correct, but I think I know why this is happening. Because um, the frame that we are scoring is always the 10th frame, the last frame. Um, so if we have a strike and two extra strikes, those are special. They, the, the last strike isn't crippled by the strike. So if, if we have two strikes, I think we need to uh, look at that law. Um, those the the three strikes is if it is is in the tenth frame we have the ten plus the next two rolls so it counts to thirty, and two strikes. Now two strikes would count to twenty. There is no way. There is no way that we uh, implemented this correctly. Um, if we have a spare, it's the same as rolling a strike and then rolling zero. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any law that it would say that if you roll a spare, it's the same as rolling a strike? Because for now, that's correct. Um... Rolling two strikes and then P is the same as rolling a strike, a P and the strike again. For now, yeah. Because and the, the last there is no way there's we don't observe anything what happens that happens after the last uh, roll. And if that last roll is a strike, the game is totally different from if it's just a uh, P or a zero even. So maybe we should score only for the, the toast. This is getting very long lo lists of laws. Um, a strike after two is the same as rolling a one. Oh no. Yeah, it rolls a strike in the midst of a frame. That is impossible. Okay, so these constructors won't do any good if we have, we are allowed them to, yeah, you cannot roll a strike if you have rolled two. So this strike is essentially the same as rolling a spare for this. Even worse, it is not. We roll 10. We roll 12 here in one a single frame. It's the same as rolling a strike and then rolling a one that counts twice because of the strike. Okay, this is nonsense. This is really nonsense. We are not constrained enough. Um, and that is the problem with the, the naive implementation, I, will, I would say naive, that you get from the test-driven design method. There is no constraint in whether you any role is counted. Anything between anything that's an int you can add to the score. Um, and now we did constrain it by using pins, but we st can still roll 10 twice in a single frame. Or no, we can roll 1 and 10 and complete that frame because that's what we do here. If it is to sum to 10, then it's called kind of this is a spare, but if it isn't, then it's no spare. So we, this implementation does not really work. <laughs> mm, what are we going to do next? Let's say, um, let's say we
remove the implementation of role and only allow to roll complete frames. No, we will change the implementation um, to include frames. That's that's what I want to do you next. Um, the implementation now has no uh, no idea of how the frame is. So let's keep an eye on these tests. Um, if we have it count frames, then we will know when we are at the start of a frame. Uh, and we can roll a strike only at the start of a frame. Otherwise, we will not add it. And rolling a spare will be automatic because if we roll anything and we have a uh, frame that's only one roll. Hmm. Let's remove the strike and the spare for now. And make sure that we roll. Um, we change the game according to what we have had so far and not just a blindly event. So um, if we have a game that is empty, no, let's do it like this. Um, if we have an empty, if our last frame If our last frame is 10, then we need to add it to the, uh, we create a new frame. But also if the length of the last frame equals 2. So, um, it will hmm. yeah we will check for this this is when the frame ends and in every other situation we will complete it if it's We need to know what the last frame was. Um, so last frame is now only one. Um, we don't have rest. Oh wait, last frame also. And now we append it to the rest, but we prepend P to the value of the last frame. Let's do it like this. Ah, this doesn't read nicely. Okay, so let's say if last frame is a single one, uh, if the last frame is 10, then we just create a new one. Otherwise, we will add it to the last frame. And if we have a last frame which has two, yeah, it doesn't matter. In every other case, we just prepend it. Because we have two rolls, it doesn't matter what we uh, did. Okay, so if, if our last frame was a single frame, a single roll, we will add a new one if it's a uh, strike, and otherwise we will wait. Let's say the minimum of these two, the last frame minus p. We don't want to roll uh, a 10 uh, or an 8 after a 4. 
So if I have an eight, we will have to take, no, 10 minus last frame. We roll this if it's lower. So the number of pins that we have left, okay. And finally, we need probably to take into account um, if it's the 10th frame. So maybe we should do this here. If it's the 10th frame. If it's a 10th frame, it should be either completing a spare or a strike. So if... If the length of rest is 9, then we are in a 10th frame. And if we are in a 10th frame, then we have to check... Uh, let's see. Let's say if this is a strike, then we can just add it to that. We can append, it's no problem. If the length is rest and it's two strikes, or it's a strike and something else. Okay, we can still add it. And if it's a spare and there's only one thing left. So we have an R0 and an R1. And uh, now we have to check whether These two out of ten. And we can still um prepend this. Wait, I have to switch R0 and R1 out. Okay, this is the final one. And otherwise, there is one more condition. We will not change the game anymore after 10th frame. Maybe we should have done this test driven again because we are in 26th minute. Uh, if the length of wait frames, if the length of frames is 10, then we will just return game. We don't concern us with what has rolled, has been rolled. And this is after a strike, we get a full. Uh, after a spare, we get a new frame, so a, a new frame is set up, we can use this. And if we have a spare, we have R0. I don't know, this is the same as here. We have to take the minimum of. B and the R0 here. Okay. Finally. Unless P is 10. <laughs> uh, um, if we have two tens we still get an empty frame where we can roll another thing so if it's two tens two strikes we can just add our current roll 
Okay, and if we run anything else but 10, then we have to... We get a single... We get to complete that frame. If we have two different things, those are 10s, then we can roll anything. And otherwise, this was just the last frame. Yeah. Okay, okay. I am very sorry. This took a long time to think it through. Um, wait. Yeah, of course. Uh, reverse rolls. Uh, reverse. Um, let's first concatenate those rolls. And then uh, score. No, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. Let's complete this tomorrow. I will upload later because I have a run in the morning. It's just a training, but it's uh, early in the morning, so uh, that's it's the time that I normally uh, would record the videos. Um, tomorrow we will look into this more um, and fix the, the test that we uh, flipped here. Um, yeah, let's see what's happening tomorrow. And uh, thank you for watching as always. And uh, yeah, let me know if, if there's anything that, uh, that you'll be interested in me seeing doing, then I will try and incorporate it into the schedule. Have a nice day.